Now, what I'm going to do this morning, I'm going to take time. I want to do it slowly because I really trust God. I want you to trust with me that we as a church will carry it. We've done this several times. We're doing it again. There's new students. There's new people. And just to refresh your heart and your mind, Jesus said that several times in his word. He says, again, I say unto you. That means that you have to repeat things so that when it goes beyond just mental ascent and understanding into a place of revelation. And we need to walk in the revelation of that. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about the kingdom. There are two kingdoms, or there are four kingdoms in this world. Daniel prophesied it and declared it. He speaks about the kingdoms of this world. Can you remember when Jesus was tempted by Satan? He said to him, if you worship, bow down and worship me, I will give you the kingdoms of the world. I'm going to talk about that sometime, but just, just to inform you, there's the kingdoms of the world. Then there's the kingdom of Satan, where he rules and reigns. Then there's the kingdom of men. Jesus speaks in another word. He says in Daniel, he speaks about the kingdoms of men. It's the, it's the spheres of society where people are influ influential. Science and agriculture and education, the kingdoms of men. And then there's the kingdom of God. And so Jesus came when he, when he entered this world. He said, I came to bring a kingdom, my kingdom. And the word kingdom is a very interesting word. It's also very interesting to see how Jesus unpacked it and showed it to his disciples so that they had a clear understanding or had to have a clear understanding so that they could live out of a place of conviction. It's very important that we understand it because when we don't, as, as I said, we live secular Christianity. And you'll get this just now. So the word kingdom is an interesting word. Kingdom means the rule and governance of God. Now, just when we say that, people get uncomfortable because our point of reference or our thought patterns or the way that we think about it is to compare it exactly or immediately with the world system. And when you think about governance and rulership, Jesus clarifies that somewhere in the word. He says, and remember, it's not with us as it is with them. He always say, he's used those words often, not so with us. Not so with you. That's not the way it will be amongst us. And when he says that, he says, when I speak about my governance in my rule, it will not be like the world who control and manipulate and overpower you. That's a big statement. Because you see, when we speak about the kingdom and the rule and the governance of God, one of the things that people think is, well, I'm moving from the kingdom of darkness. That's what the Bible says in Colossians 1.13. It says, he translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So God brings us into a kingdom of light, and we somehow think, well, I, I get saved because I, I don't want to live in sin, and I don't want to go to hell, and all the things that we think, I, I want to I I give my life to Jesus, and then I'm translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And here I just carry, I'm now saved because I'm in another kingdom. And here I just live to the best of my ability. And whenever I make a mistake, God will sort me out. Because he will rule and govern me. And, 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 and that's not the way God rules and reign, uh, and governs. God is saying to you and me today, he says there's a kingdom that works in a certain way. Now it's important, sometimes we repeat these words, but you and I have to ask God to give us revelation and insight because the understanding of it brings freedom and liberty and the way that we live. So the world system has got a certain set of rules and regulations and the way that they do life, eye for an eye. Wrong scales, mistreatment of people, Authority and how they see authority structures, how people seek positions and to govern and lord it over other people. He said, it will not be so in my kingdom. So with a set of rules and regulations, so when God says, when you come out of the kingdom of darkness and you come into the kingdom of light, you come into a kingdom that operates totally different. So you've been invited out of that kingdom or brought out of that kingdom into this kingdom and invite, listen carefully now, to get to know and learn the principles, the promises, the values, and the ways of this kingdom. 
If you go and read Psalms 119, it speaks about principles, laws, ways, the knowledge. It speaks about how David says, I have, I have kept your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So he says, I invite you into a set of values, ways, mannerisms, and an understanding of how I see life how I want you to live life, how I, what I value, how I see life, how I see the value of an individual, how I want you to run and be involved in marriage. In other words, God says, I've got a set of ways, principles, mannerisms, and values concerning your spirituality, spirit, soul, body, social life, family, and finances. And if you get to know my ways, now listen to this is the big part. I'm not here to try and just contradict the world. I'm inviting you into a kingdom and a value system and a way so that when you learn it and when you get to know it and you've adopted, that's why he says, Paul writes to the Romans, he says, do not be conformed to the world now. Come on now, somebody help me here. He says, you're saved now. You're born again now, but do not be conformed to this world. Don't think like they, don't dress like them, don't speak like them, don't behave like them, don't do business, marriage, friendship, relationship, church. Don't do it according to that system that they have because you've been translated into a brand new kingdom, into the rule and the governance of God, that the end result will be the reign of Jesus in and over our lives so that when you've got my ways, my values, my principles, my mannerisms, and my conduct deeply, listen carefully, deeply engraved in your heart, not in your head, in your heart, you will lift, listen carefully, here comes the belly sings of the kingdom. Because when you come into a kingdom, when you've got citizenship of a nation, with that comes what? Promises, benefits, and security. See, God doesn't bring us into a kingdom and say, I want you to submit to my rule and my governance because I want to sort you out. You are bad and horrible. He says, I'm inviting you into the rule and the governance of God so that my values, my ways, my mannerisms, my conduct, and the way I see things will be in your heart so that you can walk with me in this kingdom so that you can be protected, experience my peace, know my promises, and enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. Somebody say amen, please. Amen. We are not just moving because I'm now missing hell and I used to live like hell, smell like hell, and talk like hell. And now on this side, at least I'm free of hell, but nothing has really changed. He says, renew your heart, renew your mind rather, and adopt the way so that you, not just so that you can sound religious, not just so that you can say things different, but that you have a set of values, ways, conducts, and behavior in you, and understand the way I look at life, the way I look at individuals, how I see stuff, how I see marriage, how I see relationships, how I look at finances. And when you've adopted this, you can live in the benefit, the promises, the freedom, and the peace of that. That's why as a Christian, you can never just get saved, come to church, sing a few songs, read a Bible verse. That's why I invite you into the Word of God to renew your mind, study the Word, so that you get to know the ways of God, so that you and I can enjoy the benefits, the promises, the peace, and the protection, because I'm living in this kingdom according to His ways. Come on, church. When Jesus came, he said, listen, he comes into a situation where the Roman Empire is ruling. The Jews are subject to the governance and the rule of the Roman Empire. They're harsh. They do a lifestyle. They behave in ways that contrary to what the Jews are familiar with. They're merely surviving in the situation, and Jesus is arriving there are scriptures in Matthew 4, Luke 10, Luke 17, where John the Baptist begins to preach and he begins to declare. Jesus himself follows it up and he says things like this. He says, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Another place he says, listen, the kingdom of God is close. The kingdom of God is here. 
Another place he says, the kingdom of God is in you. So he says, listen, I've come as the king of the kingdom and I'm bringing this kingdom to you because I heard your cry and I'm bringing a set of values, ways, mannerisms, and conducts that when you adopt it, when you make it your own and you begin to live according to this way, you will get the full benefit of what it means to be a son and a daughter in the kingdom of God. See, we are not supposed to just get saved and then live here where we constantly beg and plead and worry and concerned and are anxious what the devil will do to us, what can happen to our children, what about finances, what about my job, what about my future, what about my... F and God says, no, he says, don't you understand that when I bring you into this kingdom, that's as a good father and a good king, I bring provision and I bring care and I bring protection and life in all of those areas. Come into this kingdom, learn my ways so that you can enjoy the benefits of it. That's why I'm in this kingdom. It's got greater benefits than that one. It's greater safety than that one. I can sleep because God's awake. God says, unless God builds the house, you labor in vain. God says, unless I watch over the city, you can get up for, you will get up for nothing and for won't help you. There are promises. He says, a thousand will fall on your left and 10,000 will not come nigh thee because I'll watch over you. There are promises that as I get to know the promises and get to know his ways, as I come to approach him the way he requires from me by his grace, some things begin, and I begin to live in the favor and the grace and the kindness of the God that set up a kingdom so that we as sons and daughters can live there. So these kingdom disciples that Jesus began to disciple came into this. They, they were introduced to a king that just did life differently, lived differently, and began to introduce to them, and I can't get into all of that. I touched on that before. He says, so you can know the heart of my father. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. The father loves you. To be honest, there are scriptures that says it so beautifully. I wanna, I wanna give you a few words. So there are Greek words that Jesus used to introduce to the disciples because their minds were consumed with what they were under. They were experiencing the, the very presence of the Roman empires. They were experiencing the, 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 the boldness and, um, and the aggression of the soldiers living in their face, telling them what they can and can't do and, and, and how they should and shouldn't live and can and can't live. And Jesus comes into this very situation and says, I'm bringing a new kingdom. I'm bringing in a brand new kingdom and I'm gonna introduce you to this kingdom and the way that this kingdom works. And he calls them to be his disciples. So in other words, he says, first of all, I want you to know that when you surrender, that's why we sang the song, that's what Jesus says, when you surrender, you will get to a place where I'll translate you into, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. But for you to get to know the things and the ways of the kingdom, you're going to have to be a disciple. Say disciple. The word disciple simply means to be a learner or a student of the things of the kingdom of God. Now, one of the things that we will never get away from, and I'm sorry to say this to you, you'll never become a true disciple until you start reading the Bible. Because it's within the new covenant or in the new testament that when we read and begin to read that we'll get familiar, doesn't matter whether you read a chapter, two chapters, half a chapter, a verse, but have an intention to begin to read and reread the Bible so that you get to know the will of God. So come on, just say amen, please, somebody. Say it like you believe you read your Bible. Amen? And when we read it, you see, so, so you can't, you'll get... That what God will do supernaturally for you and me is he saves us by, us by his grace supernaturally and transport us so you are now here, boom, shoo, supernaturally. He ta and he, I'll talk about that now. He says, but for you to get to know this way, you're gonna have to begin to learn and be a learner and a student of my ways and my new covenant truths so that you will know how to live in harmony and in unforced rhythm with me and my spirit living within you and not according to a set of rules or so that you are not a carnal Christian. A carnal Christian is somebody that is saved but work out Christianity according to their own minds and religious ways. So you learn my ways and how to live by it. 
You have to be a learner, a student of this. So these disciples are walking with Jesus, and as they would walk, he begins to show them the heart of God, the love of God, God's heart for people. He begins to demonstrate not just that he is a king, he demonstrates the way of the king, and he demonstrates the power of the king. Come on now, somebody help me here. Doesn't just show them that he is the king by the way he walks and the way he talks. At times that people get him to a place where they want to push him over the cliff, but they can't. The Bible says he turns around and walks through all of them because his time has not yet come. And the authority that is in him and on him demonstrates itself that they can't touch him and do anything to him because he's a king. He shows them the way of the king by the way that he treats people. There are times that they are in a place, and, he, and one of the disciples said, he says, these kicks are mocking us. Shall we, shall we do what Elijah did, call out a bear and let it destroy all the kicks? He says, you don't know of what spirit you are. Oh, I'm saying big things now. Yeah, come on out, church. He says, you don't know of what spirit you are. He says, because the kingdom that I'm bringing and the rulership that I'm bringing is not the one of this world that just want to take people out and get equal and, and, and get revenge. He says, there's a different spirit. The way I treat people, the way I respond to sin, the way I respond to people that are falling down and struggling and battling is gonna be a surprise to you because I see potential in everyone that I've made in my image and likeness. And I know Satan has just kind of deceived them, robbed them and got them into some form of bondage, but I've got the power to get them out of it. So I'm gonna show you how to treat them so that they can experience my power. So at places he does that, he, he puts his hand on a, on a man that's got leprosy, and they say, you shouldn't touch him because leprosy will come onto you. He says, no, when I touch somebody, healing will come onto them. Another place, there's a demon guy they're, they're manifesting, throwing him in, on the ground and into the fire, and he, and he grabs hold of that young man, casts the demon out, speaks to it, and it leaves immediately, and he's in his right mind and stand up there, and they say, what kind of this is thing? He says, you have seen the kingdom of God demonstrated to you. Do you get that? Can you imagine how confident and secure you must feel hanging around Jesus when he walks demonstrating his kingship? communicating and beginning to show you another way of living and another way of seeing things. Do you think, wow, I've never seen it like that. I kind of thought I need to punch the guy. I need a thought I need him, give him a thousand words. He says, no, I'm gonna show you a new way of doing this. And then as they begin to adopt that new way, then he speaks into that situation and bah, the power of God demonstrates itself. Somebody gets healed, somebody gets delivered. Somebody changes the way they feel comfortable with him somehow, not because he compromised the truth, but because they feel that he's got the answer to their problem. Jesus begins to teach them and they hang with him and they're excited about it. And, and at times they get overconfident and other times they get uncertain and he comes back from the mountain. They said, Lord, we tried our best to get this demon out. We couldn't, I don't know what we're doing. He said, it's because you're full of unbelief. <laughs> He says, uh, you're not really believing. You're looking at the manifestation. And you're looking at the noise that the thing makes. You look at all, listen to what is all the growling and all the noises they make. Don't listen to what, what they're saying and don't listen. He says to Jeremiah at another place, he says, Jeremiah, I'm gonna send you out to preach my word. Don't look at the people's faces. That's a scripture I discovered in my early preaching career. <laughs> Helped me a lot. Not this lot, they friendly, it's, it's more. I mean, not this lot. But, but I've learned over the years that, that sometimes you, you have to know that you've got a word from God and, and, that, and that he can handle what he sees. And what, so because we, he bolds into them, he says, I want you to know, don't be moved by what you see so that it puts within you a doubt and an unbelief and causing you to question whether God is really able to do the impossible. And these guys are walking with Jesus. And he's walking and, and at one stage he gets to a place um, in Matthew, he says to them, he says, there's gonna be a time that I leave and when I leave, it's gonna to be to your advantage because everything that I've taught you, you will know. To be honest, he prays that prayer in John 17. He says, Father, uh, the ones that you've given me, I've not lost one of them. In all the highs and the lows and all the challenges, somehow by me revealing myself to them so that they know the heart of the Father and the kingdom that I'm from, Somehow as I teach them ways that doesn't always make sense, but come on, keep on working. 
And every time I speak into a situation which they think is impossible, some devil bows its knee, some sickness runs out, and some situation changes. He says, even when the banks are closed, we'll find money in a fish's mouth. Come on now. He says, I think they're getting it. He says, guys, there's gonna be a time that I leave, and when I leave, it's gonna be to your benefit because the Spirit of God's gonna come and live within you. He says, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna communicate this kingdom. Now, the disciples get a surprise. As you know, Jesus dies on the cross. They, they get all panicky and anxious again about all the stuff that they've learned and Jesus that was with them, and now something needs to happen. Now, let me just back up a little bit before I get there. The word, there are two words that Jesus adopted out of the Greek language. The one is apostles, and the other one is ecclesia. I'm gonna talk about that now. So these two words are important words. They talk about the kingdom, and they talk about the carriers or the vehicle of the kingdom. The word basileia, is the Greek word for kingdom, which means the rule of God. In other words, God says, my basileia, my basileia, I will bring my kingdom rule onto this earth. I see you've been suppressed, oppressed. Now, listen to me. Let me just say this important thing this morning too. The kingdom of God, we're not so concerned about the kingdom of God coming on the natural world. Because the natural world already subject and submitted to the voice of God. Whenever God speaks to nature, it yields and submits to Him. The kingdom of God, when it comes, that's why He speaks and He says, it's come, it's near, it's in you. And the demonstration of the kingdom and the outworking of the kingdom comes in a great way through the kingdom of God coming in us. So that's why Christianity can never be you and me attending a church service, listening to a few sermons, and casually coming in and out. We are joined, we translated into a kingdom, joined to a family, and built into it, and see God translate and change us into authentic kingdom people. So that when the kingdom comes in us, and I'll talk about that now, and we go out there to demonstrate it, we demonstrate something very specific. It's not about God, can I ask you for a few things? And God, that's why he says, he says, don't worry about the things. You need to get and understand in my kingdom, when you seek first my kingdom, I will give you the things. So don't come to me about the things. Don't worry about things. Come on, church. That's why I know when we make altar calls, people never come up for things. They always come up and say, pray for me for the fruit of the Spirit or the gifts. Or pray for me, pastor, to have more patience and long-suffering and endurance. In this church, they always ask that. They never ask for things. Isn't that fantastic? It's awesome. Why? Jesus says, he says, because you're gonna get the things anyway. I know that you need things, and things is low-level stuff. I want you to get to a higher level because I've overcome all these things. So the kingdom, the rule of God, the basileia, kingdom is the rule of God. The word ecclesia, which is translated church in the Bible, means the called out ones. Now, you need to know that and understand that because it's very important. That's the way we live life differently when we understand this. Basileia, the kingdom or the rule of God, God says, my ultimate goal is to bring my kingdom. That's why Jesus descended, Ephesians 4, he descended and ascended. So he brought the kingdom down so that the church may come up. I can't go into all of that and how he descended into the lower parts of the earth, but Jesus descended. The kingdom came so that we can experience the kingdom and come into the kingdom of God so that we can pray. That's why he said on this earth, when you walk around, you begin to understand this kingdom. He says, you need to pray like this. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We are not just here to compete and compare ourselves with heaven and live like a life in a kind of a Christian version of the problem. He says, no, I brought you into a kingdom with a, with a set of values, ways, and mannerisms, and you need to learn them so that you, that's why he says you are in this world, but you're not of this world at all. 
Jesus is teaching them this. Basileia is the divine, ecclesia, ecclesia is the human. It's this, it's this vehicle that God says, I'm gonna get ready on the earth. So all along, Jesus teaches the disciples, bear with me a little bit this morning, church, please. As I came to bring my kingdom. This kingdom is very focused. It's got a set of ways. Listen, I will keep on saying it because I want you to get it. I want you to ask yourself the question, am I familiar with the ways, the values, the principles, and the conducts of God so that I don't live here with a mindset of how I think it should be, how I think God wants to do things, and then end up in a place where you are begging and pleading from God all the time because you live in a space of, you save but anxiety and with all kinds of attacks on your mind because you're not living in the abundant life that he produces within his kingdom rule and reign. The benefits, the promises, the peace, the protection that comes when, when you live with a passport in a nation. Come on now. So now, these disciples are looking at these Romans. They are conquering nation after nation, a nation after nation. They realize that when they conquer a nation, to subdue them to themselves is one thing. To get them to a place where they live a lifestyle, where they take on their, their, their ways, their mannerisms, and do things the way they want to do it, takes a massive input from those people in key positions and, title and situations. In other words, they can conquer a nation and have them under their authority, but still have people live life the way they used to live in their old ways according to their old nation and culture. So if they wanna change a nation and really have the full benefit of what they conquered, they realize they're gonna to have to not just conquer them with their armies, Are you listening to me? but leave behind people that will influence them in the different spheres of society. In other words, they would conquer a nation and then they will take with them a teacher so that they begin to teach the children the Roman ways. They begin to take an agriculture, a farmer with, they will teach them the way that they would farm. And not too long after they've been there, the people begin to use certain ways. Have you ever had a child that lived overseas for a while and then they come back with a little bit of an accent and some words you've never heard before, apart from the curse or swear words, I'm not talking about those. But just what they call things that we don't call the same thing. Because there's a language and a way of doing things, there's a culture that goes with a nation. And so as they live there, they begin to influence people in every sphere of society to begin to not just live under their rule, but to begin to do things their way. The people that they called out, the Roman Empire was called the Ecclesia. Did you hear that? The Ecclesia, they were people that were called out. So when the Roman Empire conquered with his armies a nation, he would sit in his seat of authority and say, I'm looking for people that are prepared to go to another nation. And when I sent you, I want you to go on behalf of us, not just as a representative of the Roman Empire, I want you to go with a set of values, ways, mannerisms, and behavior so that you influence the school kids, the science, business, every sphere of society, not just with how to do business, but our way of doing business, so that when we come back here 10 years later, these people look like the Romans. Hello, church. The people that they called out were the Ecclesia. And so these people would stand up, put their hands up. They would get an assignment with a letter and a stamp on it. And they would go. The people that they would send then, they called them the Apostolus. The sent ones. Are you listening? Listen carefully. He called them the Apostolus. People that were sent. They were called out. Now listen to me carefully, church, I want you, this is such a significant time for us as a church. It's so important for us because God's doing something on the earth and he wants us to get this. I really believe that with all my heart. So you have to think and listen with me a little bit this morning. In other words, when he calls them out and say, we have now conquered that kingdom with our kingdom, what I'm now looking, I'm calling people out, I'm ecclesia, I'm calling an ecclesia, a people that are prepared to stand up and say, I'm prepared to go. And when you go, you will go with a letter of approval, a letter of authority and a stamp from the, from the, from the 
authorities of Rome that I am sending you and you come in my name and authority, but it should be people that represent and reflect us accurately. It's, it's not people who didn't make it in the city, who didn't make it in this world, who didn't make it in their business, who didn't make it somewhere and now looking for some kind of a new beginning. Are you listening? I'm calling people that are already successful, people that have had their minds renewed, that have adopted a set of ways and mannerisms and conduct and understand the Roman values and principles so that when you put your hand up, you are somebody that has so been renewed in your mind concerning who we are and what we're about so that we can send you into that situation so that you don't get confused with the already systems just trying to merely survive and make it. Come on. Did you know in the old days, I don't know how it works nowadays, Edna's brother was involved uh, with foreign affairs and he was uh, in the embassy in Australia and in uh, Romania. And in those days when they would send an ambassador from South Africa to any nation, they would send you for four years, only four years. And when you're an ambassador of South Africa in any nation, I think that's the same for any, every other nation. When you're an ambassador in a nation, you don't speak for yourself and you don't do your own thing. You represent a nation in dress code, in what they eat and how they run that whole thing. So you represent the voice of your prime minister or your president. You represent a set of values and you represent what the nation stands for so that when they look at you and how you speak, you accurately represent that nation, not yourself. After four years, they'll take you out and bring you back in case you have been so touched and affected by the existing culture that you would get confused and kind of wear out a bit. So they bring you back and refresh you and send you to another nation. So when they call them out, they say this to them, you are called out, you are in this kingdom of us, we call you out, we now sent you, and you are an accurate representation of all of this. Now here's where it gets excited. Now Jesus calls the disciples. I'm almost done. Hallelujah. He calls his disciples and he sit in the room. And they sit in a circle like this. And he says, guys, been with you for three years now. Been hanging with you. I remember I told you that I've come to bring a kingdom. The kingdom is here. You've seen it. I'm the king. He says to Peter, who do you say that I am? He says, others say this, others say, but you, I know you're the Christ. You're the anointed one sent by God to do this thing. I, I know who you are. He says, you're right, Father showed it to you. He says, and you demonstrated to us another way how, how to surrender our lives and live a way that's different from the way to the world. And you've demonstrated that in your name, there's authority. That's why he says, you can ask anything in my name, Father will do it for you. And if Jesus wanted to do it right, according to the Hebrew law, he should have called the disciples, priests, rabbis, shepherds, or disciples, but he called them apostles. And he's sitting with them around the table. He says, hey boys, you know what we're gonna do? He says, they are doing this thing that Pastor Louis preached on this morning. They get people from this kingdom into that kingdom. Then they call people out. They call them the ecclesia, called out from the emperor's throne and authority. They call them, say, yeah, you qualify. You've got the whole deal. You understand who we are. And then they apostle as them. They send them. And they call them apostles. He says, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do to them what they want to do to us. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do to them what they're trying to do to us. You, my apostles. And they said, what's that? And Jesus preached my sermon to them. <laughs> Listen to me, church. I'm finished. I'm gonna just pull that together with one sentence or two sentences. We can never be Christians by just merely accepting Jesus Adrienne said it's a powerful thing yesterday. We had a leadership training time. We spoke about relationships and mentoring and, and connecting with one another. And she said an important thing. And she said this. She said, before I was a Christian, or maybe she was a Christian, I don't know, Adrienne, I don't know whether you were or not. She said, I had friends. 
good friends, great friends. We had wonderful friendships, relationships, authentic relationships. We kind of be real to one, with one another and open and honest, See, except for one thing. Jesus was not in the thing, so all the opinions and whatever people think or didn't think didn't matter, and it never challenged me to change. Until I came into a mentoring situation in the kingdom of God where we had the same kind of relationship with a difference. We were all in the same kingdom, knowing that we are not here not just to be saved, but to be transformed and translated into the image of Christ. And together we pursue as learners and students the ways of God so that when some other time we get a call from God and he says, listen, I'm sending you into the business world, into the teaching world. I'm sending you into a situation somewhere in the sporting world, in the music world, in the agricultural world, into science, medicine, law, wherever you're going to go, that you are sure that you represent the kingdom of God well because you are now called out and I'm sending you forth with a set of values, ways, and mannerisms so where you come in, you change everything because you're my apostle. And that's what you are. That's why we are saying to ourselves and declaring that our vision is that we are a kingdom apostolic family. Next week, I'm going to preach to you about what it means to be a prophetic people. So when we sent you from here on a Sunday, when, we sent, when Jesus sent you into a place where you work, church, that's why we engage. That's why we allow God to plant you in a church, not to listen to a sermon. Oh, yes, that's part of it. You listen to the word, receive the word, draw from the word, worship together. This is the place where we all sit together and the focus is on him. We all come to worship and acknowledge that he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. We come and sit under the word and it doesn't really matter who says what and where. Somewhere along the line, there's a word for you and you come out of this place to say, I received something this morning to adjust, to change so that I can live in this kingdom with a set of values, ways and mannerisms, with comfort, with peace, with, with confidence because there are benefits, protection and peace here and when I go out from here as a sent one, I go out with a set of values and principles. That's why we belong to connect life groups so that people get to know me for who I am and who am I not so that we cannot nail one another and judge one another and condemn one another but help one another, encourage one another and hold one another accountable to be real Christians. Because Christianity is not a sermon. Christianity is not just a belief system. Christianity is a group of people that are too deeply rooted and grounded in a kingdom. People that have laid down their lives and surrendered that they, Lord, I'm available for you to send me into a world where the Bible says, even if they hate you, don't worry, I've overcome the world. And whoever believes in me will overcome the world so that you and I can make a difference knowing this, that the spirit of God lives within us. The truth of God is in us. The ways of God is there. And as we respond that way, People see what Christianity looks like. It's more than a sermon. We are a kingdom called out, sent people. Why don't you say that with me? I am a called out, sent people. In Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes. Jesus in John 3 says this. He says, you will never understand what I'm talking about and how this works unless you get born again. John 3, 3 and 5, he says, unless you get born again, you'll never see the kingdom of God. Unless you're born of water and the spirit, you'll never enter the kingdom of God. In Ezekiel 20, 36, 26, he says this, when you come to me, I will take out your heart of stone and I will give you a brand new spirit and a brand new heart. The kingdom of God doesn't come with a set of rules and regulations. It doesn't come merely because we have head knowledge about what should. It comes by a brand new spirit, somebody that carries a heart that is renewed and changed by the king for his kingdom. So we don't just live under the authority of the king. We live with the ways of the king. And I believe somehow that God wants to bring us into a new understanding and a revelation because there are people coming our way that's not going to look like us, talk like us, behave like us. And then we need to make sure that we can give them more than a sermon. Because we've sent by God with a set of ways and values that will deeply touch and move them.